right wing. Our dollar is as strong as it's been since most of most of you guys were born. I really am curious to see what happens here. This is going to be a very, 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 very interesting power dynamic because when you have somebody, look what happened with Bolsonaro, right? Like Bolsonaro in a lot of ways, right? In Brazil. And all of a sudden you have somebody that comes into power that some people would call it cocky. Some people call it confidence. Some people would call it missing a screw. Uh, but it becomes a new power dynamic. Now in Italy, for example, for those of you guys who remember, Italy has been uh, one of those countries, not as bad as Greece, but for those of you guys that are older, you'll remember back in the, in the mid 2000s, uh, there was an economic crisis in, in the EU. And the, basically it was what happens. And this is why I get very concerned when, when it's, it's, it's an interesting conversation when people say, hey, Stocky, we need to do what Europe does or we need to do what this country does. And I'm like, hey, listen, we have a lot of things to do to improve our society in America. Absolutely. Well, let's be careful jumping on the bandwagon because what happened, and we saw this, but a lot of the, here's the thing, a lot of the people that are very vocal uh, online, especially when it comes to like a lot of different things when it comes to the economics, they're very, um, I don't want to say they're not dumb. They're just ignorant and ignorant just means, just means lack of knowledge, right? So when somebody says they're ignorant to this, it doesn't, it's not necessarily a, 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 a insult, right? If I'm saying you're stupid or you're dumb, that means you have access to the information and you refuse to believe it, or you just don't care. Ignorance can oftentimes mean you just don't have all the information. So you're un uninformed. And so when I see a lot of these younger people online yelling about certain things about e economics, I'm like, Okay, I get where you're coming from, but you're coming from a place of idealism. You're coming from a place of, of, of you know, uh, utopia, right? Like what you think is the perfect example. And I'm like, but you're not old enough to remember a lot of these things and, and, and reading about them or hearing about them from someone else gives you a different perspective. But if you live through it or watch it happen, you understand. Now, let me, I'm prefacing that because I'm going to get into this. Back in the mid 2000s and, and some before, before those of you guys who were like actuallys, Guys, remember when I talk about this stuff, I am going to be talking about this in a very watered down version just to give a generalized idea, not all the specifics, okay? So you had the EU long time ago, right? Long time ago, you know, 15 years ago. And one of the things that there was a problem with was something that we see like in, in Spain today, right? It, 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 it's good for the people at the time. And that was, is that there was a lot of social programs, especially like in Greece, for example, right? Now, one thing is that, uh, is that this country was very big on like pensions, right? Like, like government, government, uh, uh, uh I don't want to say government programs, right? And government, like I said, don't get me wrong. In the United States, we have a long way to go. We have a lot of improvements we can make with, with government programs, but one thing about the EU is that a lot of them don't pay for their, their defenses uh, and their military because the US government pays for that. That's part of our military spending, not our defense spending. That gives them a lot of money to open up social programs. The problem is, is that oftentimes when you give something, you can't take it back, right? So for example, let's say times are good. You've got a surplus. You've got this huge economic stability, this increase, you know, taxes, people are doing well. And you're like, okay, we're going to take a portion of this. We're going to basically give a dividend, right? We're going to give uh, earlier retirement. We're going to give more vacation days. We're going to give more sick days. We're going to give free education. We're going to give free uh, healthcare. We're going to do all this, right? And it's great during good times. Problem is, is that one, aging populations, and two, economic changes can, can stop that, right? So for example, in Greece, and remember, I'm just giving a very, 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 very watered down version. There's a lot of other things that went into this, but in Greece, for example, they continue to do this, right? They continue to, to pile on and they gave retirements, they gave state sponsored pensions, they gave uh, uh, huge credits to housing and medical and school and the whole nine yards. And they kept racking up this thing, but they had a surplus and, and this was when the Euro was really strong in the nineties. They had a lot of tourism. They had a lot going on. They had a huge influx of capital. Everything was great. But then we started seeing people, younger people working more people leaving. We started seeing the population get older. We started seeing this. Then all of a sudden, when you had an economic downturn, you still had this large debt, this huge debt, right? The government's like, oh shit, what do we do? Well, if France which then again, Fran the French will, 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 will start a revolution over a croissant that's not perfect, okay? But here's the thing. Once you give out these things, you can't take them back because then you have social unrest, right? You have people that lose their fucking mind. So you have to be careful sometimes from an economic standpoint of how much you give with the idea that you can't take back, right? So you say, hey guys, we're having a great year. We're having a great import export. We're having a great economy. We want to spread it with the wealth. Then all of a sudden the world changes, the economies change, things happen. 
and you can't be like, hey guys, remember how we hooked you up with all this? Yeah, we're gonna have to stop that. So they de they decided they weren't gonna do that. And they were just gonna continue to, to say, okay, times will change, we'll continue to, to borrow. And so they started borrowing from Germany and France. This is before the EU. And next thing you know, they went into an absolute fucking economic bomb. It was not good. I mean, we're talking about the entire European Union had to come together to bail out Greece, okay? The pre-European Union, all right? Well, then everyone started noticing that there was a there was a, a, a domino effect that was going to take place. Italy was next. Spain. Several other companies. Portugal. Several other countries. It, it, it was it was it was it was about to be a domino effect. So this is one of many reasons that led to the to the formation of the euro or the, the EU, right? It wasn't just about us all coming together. In my personal opinion, it was just Germany and France being like, hey, bitches, we're bailing you out. You owe us. We're going to get together, have one currency that we're going to control. But that's just another conversation for the time. So then the EU came together and they're like, all right, if we all have the same currency, then we can we can, you know, try to have some stability. What I was saying is, is now we've got an interesting dynamic, right? So now we have Italy. OK, we have Italy who has a new prime minister. OK, and I, I, I had so much more I wanted to go over. I wanted to start talking about how the uh, the IMF uh, helped manipulate this and how uh, a lot of this was going on. This, this is all before the EU. Right. So we end up seeing this crisis. So now we have the EU and the EU is still run basically by Germany. I mean, let's be honest. Germany is like 20 percent, 25 percent of all decision makings. You got like 15 percent here. And the rest of it's like 2% here, there, here, here. It's, like, it's, it's basically run by Germany, a little bit of France and, and England. Once they left, they lost a lot of that power. But you've got, you know, Spain, which has massive unemployment, which is good because people love, I mean, uh, people love being it because they have a lot of government programs. Now, I'm not against government programs and social programs, right? Like I said, the U.S. has a long way to go. But there is an extent of if we give things... If we take them back, then you can't, you know, you have to find another way to go more in debt and, and then it exacerbates these problems. And the only way to get out of it is to cut things, right? Like right now we're cutting rates, right? We're making money more expensive. Doesn't affect people on the borrowing side, but once you get into houses and credit cards, it starts to bother people. And then when people can't afford to live or, or, or to get into, uh, get out of debt, next thing you know, there's, there's social unrest. So in Italy, you have a new prime minister. The headlines all came out and said, she's fascist. She's Mussolini. She's Hitler light, et cetera, et cetera. And for every single one of you guys that are coming in here saying, oh, Stocky, yeah, did you hear about the new fascist government, stuff like that? I can't say you're wrong because I haven't done enough research on her, but I would say that if you're automatically saying that the day after CNN is saying that headline, I would say you might be just being a parrot right now. I need to do more research, but from what I have seen, yes, she is significantly more right wing right-leaning, whatever you want to call it, conservative, etc. right? She's definitely more than they're used to. Now, she might turn out to be a fucking fascist. She might come out in a goddamn brown uniform tomorrow. I don't know. But I wouldn't necessarily jump on and say, oh, because someone has a difference in things that they're automatically a fascist, right? I think we've, 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 we've watered down the term fascist so much because it's just a way of saying, oh, you don't agree with me and you are, 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 you know, right leaning on a certain subject, you're a fascist. Like that's like the new thing. One thing I want to watch with her is, is you have a strong headed, I got elected by being the outsider. I know nothing to, I owe nothing to anybody. And I am a much more quote unquote conservative, uh, leader in a very, modern money theory Keynesian economics system and so I want to watch the power dynamic and she's a woman so it's much different when it's a man than it's a woman because when a man is that way a lot of people say oh you're automatically a fascist you hate women you hate this 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 when a woman comes into power and she's on that side it's a little bit more tricky right people will say oh she's brainwashed or she's this for, for some reason we think women in conservatism think uh, whatever I don't know this is the power dynamic I want to watch I want to watch and I wouldn't be surprised I'm not saying it's going to happen but I wouldn't be surprised if these motherfuckers start threatening a Brexit like thing soon now I'm not saying they're gonna do it but this is what I want to watch I wouldn't be surprised to see if she stays in power and she bucks heads and says hey we need to cut this or we need to do that we need to do this to get to I wouldn't be surprised to see if they threaten some kind of, maybe not actual Brexit, but some kind of like, you know, I don't want to say threatening, but at the same time, I really am curious to see what happens here. 
uh, threaten to go back to a, a currency, right? Or throw back, threaten to uh, 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 leave the council, whatever, I don't know. The problem though, is that Italy is still reeling heavily from COVID. They are still recovering heavily from COVID. And what do I mean by that? Well, for those of you guys who remember, during COVID, Italy got hit harder per capita than any country in the world at the time. I mean, they lost like a tenth of their population or something, not a tenth, maybe it was one twentieth or whatever, like 5% of the population was either killed or long COVID, whatever. Now, a lot of that is because everybody in fucking Italy still smokes <laughs> and there's an aging population, but they lost a lot. And on top of that, they were bringing in $54 billion per year in tourism. $54 billion a year in tourism, international tourism. That's a lot of money. And they haven't recovered from that. Sure, with the dollar being at the all-time high against the uh, against the pound and a 25-year high or 30-year high against the euro, you'd be like, well, Stocky, shouldn't that be good for them? Americans with more money are going to fly in and spend American dollars in Italy, and that's going to spend a lot. That's going to that's going to increase a lot of GDP. Well, no, because here's the other problem. Over here in the U.S. We have the, we, our dollar is the strongest it's been since most of, most of you guys were born. Like the, the last time the, the pound was at 104 to one, I was born. It was 1985. Okay. We actually went to 103 at one point this morning. All right. For some of you guys, the last time the Euro and the U S dollar were at this level, it was 1990 something. Some of y'all weren't born from a global standpoint. You think, okay, U S dollar is strong. U S people are going to now travel because it's cheaper for them to travel abroad. They get their dollar goes further and these guys are getting a lot more money because it's US dollars coming in. Even with conversion rate, they're still going to up their prices because why wouldn't you up your price, right? Normally you charge fucking $5 for a goddamn baguette, but now you charge six because US dollars are stronger and these tourists are going to convert and, and pay more because for them it's still cheaper because their dollars worth so much, right? It's like a, it's like a cycle that happens with, with currencies. But the problem is, is we're dealing with inflation, even though... The US dollar is so goddamn strong compared to the euro, now the pound and the yen. People can't travel because they're paying too much at home. I mean, airlines are through the roof right now. Food is up. We just got the guys, butter, butter is 25% more expensive this year. My people that live in the South are, 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 are in shambles this morning. You can't have a bowl of grits, one tablespoon of butter per cup of grits, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe it's time to go all in on cows by the cowboys. By the cow.